This is a 2018 Nissan Murano. It's an all-wheel drive model, platinum trim. It's pretty well loaded, and I, I know you can barely see it at this point. And that's kind of the point of the video. I wanted to make a nighttime video because I think the Murano has a pretty cool light show. And I'm now trying to balance these two things where I, I would love to be able to see the, uh, the vehicle as I record the video, but I need it to be dark enough that we can see the lights. So there's an interior light show that goes on, ambient lighting and things like that. But then we also have exterior lighting. And for this purpose, I've got a camera in the back, a camera in the front. And what I'll be trying to do is record different lighting scenarios for this vehicle. You know, basically when you lock it, unlock it, what happens, headlights, high beams and things like that. Just as much as I can. I think I usually like to do videos like that to show how these vehicles look at night because for one whenever you go to look at a car at a car lot you know at a dealership most probably you're doing it during the day and even uh, aside from that whenever you look at reviews online you you're probably going to be looking at daytime videos you know because again they have to be clear but maybe you do a lot of nighttime commuting or whatever the reason you know maybe the color will just drive you nuts it would be nice to know that so this is not really meant as a review but I just wanted to showcase what the platinum trim specifically offers with the Murano okay so without further ado let's do this I've got my remote key fob over here oh one of these multiple things over here okay great so first thing I'd like to do is just go ahead and lock it. Let's see what the light show looks like. As I said, I've got a camera in the front. You know, getting a front view. I've got another camera again, the back view. The lights don't stay on too long, right? At least with our current setting. Unlock it. Hey, look at that. Look at the puddle lighting. And look at inside the vehicle. I think it's pretty cool. It said nice ambient lighting. Uh, the LED lights in front, the DRLs, daytime running lights, kind of drive me nuts personally, but I think most people like LEDs, so, you know, sell for the masses. And I was going to, uh, to remote start the vehicle, but I think what I'm going to do right now is actually just go inside just open the doors and see what it looks like whenever you open it in the dark handle you know this is one crazy thing about the car with intelligent keys and all that stuff I would love for it to sense me when I'm close you know so that it can come alive Nissan's been doing that for a while it, ju it just locked that's what you heard and that's why the key you know the security light is on in there it has a timeout so let me unlock it again just listen out it unlocks a little differently when you use the intelligent keypad and I've done a video on locking and unlocking the Murano but it was a daytime video so you kind of miss out on a lot of different things right okay open the door let me let it cool down again okay let's get it before it cools down I want the lights to go off then I'll get into it. I'm going to give it time. I'll try to be as thorough as possible. Kind of racing against time because, you know. Oh, there you go. Let's get in. I was going to say the sky is getting a little blue. Look at that. Pretty nice ambient lighting, would you say? Look at the amber piping, piped lighting. Look at that. Obviously. I like the the door sill lighting over here, or kick plate lighting as they call them. That says Murano over there. Look at the back. For some reason the back looks very, very well lit. I guess maybe more surface being that this is a tan colored vehicle. Not 100% sure, but I'm trying to look for that piping, the amber lighting. Okay, 
let me open it here there you go this side has it too can barely see it but you know that's with the standard lighting right now the setting in the vehicle is for the doors to activate the dome lights but you can turn it off right around right over there so let me turn it off for people that like a little more discretion I guess okay and what that does is that okay I'm gonna let it cool down again let that side puddle lamp go off I think that's like one of the coolest features of the platinum <laughs> okay let's do it again now I'll just look at what it looks like inside without all the LED lighting interfering there you go that's what you have crazy thing I was saying about the footwheel lighting do you notice that side has it but the driver side did not seem to have much of anything I'm holding the door switch to force it in. It does have it, it's just very, very dim. But it's there as well, over there. All right, that's how you see the pedals. Okay, down with the front. Check out the back. The LED lighting is really, really bright. <laughs> and let me get in. I'm gonna turn this on to door, the door switch, door mode. You can actually force all of them to turn on the dome lights and they get a little brighter. You notice that? Because this is what usually happens. You might not really be able to tell, but normally whichever door you open, the corresponding dome light is gonna be a little brighter. So for example, this one here, let's deal with the back one, right? Open this door. Look at the dome lights. Look up here, okay? And I'm now going to push this door switch to simulate shutting the door. It got dim. I'm going to release it. It got brighter. So it's kind of, might be a little hard to tell at this point, but if you force everything to turn on by using this little switch over there, you'll notice how much brighter it can get All right. so I think this is like one of the first things I wanted to do just show the the light show opening doors what happens let's open the trunk too why not right well let's kick it the trunk light comes on it's not as bright as the others and you only have one of them some other Nissan models you know the crossover style usually have another one up here but this one I guess it illuminates the left side so it's it's good enough not a big deal you know can't complain um, the trunk closing switch is lit up I'd like to see how fast the trunk light goes off immediately Okay, so there's the answer. We're gonna open the other side as well, just for the for comparison's sake. I think the lighting is pretty good. As I said, this is what I wanted to showcase about the Murano. And plus, the visibility inside is good, and I'd say you're pretty visible from outside too, unless you got some really dark tint. So, if you're about to do anything unbecoming in your vehicle. A Murano is not the vehicle for you. <laughs> so that's what we got going on. I think at this point what I'm going to do is jump in and activate some lights and we'll just see. Hopefully the camera there the cameras catch the front and back view. I would have said this is the point that it would make sense to remote start the vehicle but being that it's got DRLs daytime running lights those LEDs that are constantly on I'd rather not let me just play with the lights at my own convenience right now and I'll show you the settings I'll be playing with so the stock right here first thing is 
So we've got the stock in here. First thing I'd like to do is just go ahead and turn on lights. This is city lights or parking lights. You'll notice we have this guest of an LED over here. It's above. It's usually up here on the map lamp, map, uh, you know, sunroof switch area. Whenever you turn on your headlights, parking lights, that LED comes on. You see that? And what that LED does is it illuminates this area. Pretty, it's a really tiny light, but pretty powerful as to what it does so these are the lights that come on the switches and lights that turn on whenever you turn on your your parking lights you'll notice that there's a green indicator on the gauge cluster and that just lets you know that hey your you know your parking lights are on at least some level of lighting is on right it tells you to push the brake and start it and all that but I also wanted to show that the heated um, Heated and cooled seat switches also get illuminated with lights. The gear selector, some buttons on around the center center stack, steering wheel controls. All these are the controls on the left knee bolster area. I usually say these are the buttons that shouldn't be played with at all because they're so inconveniently placed. You know things like the heated steering wheel trip button and whatnot over here you can barely see it I guess it needs a little more turning on of lights but at some level so this is just parking lights right now headlights okay right now you can't see the other lights on yet the other buttons that you usually turn on whenever you turn on the vehicle so it's interesting how they have like two stages of lighting and I'll turn on the vehicle and you'll be able to see that the lights come on as well but I wanted to at least just do that play with that so headlights as you can see whether it's parking or headlights same green green indicator right high beams you get the blue I'm sure that other camera is having a blast with that so headlights then high beam so you can kind of do it independently you notice that the green can stay on or not what with the headlights on i'd like to turn on the fog lights see that the green that comes on at the bottom and that's what it looks like outside it's pretty i'd say it's pretty effective honestly so now let me turn everything off and then i was going to just hit the brake first off in the brake all I'm trying to do is show how much you illuminate the, the back area um, we got hazard lights yeah just the usual I think by now I've kind of hit most of the main main functions I'd say but I'd like to kind of take this to the next level Normally when you're recording videos, you, you sit there thinking, man, I, I wish it doesn't get dark. Right now I'm sitting here thinking, I wish it doesn't get light too soon, you know. <laughs> because I still want to do a little more of the light show. But what I'm going to do now is just uh, go ahead and remote start the vehicle. That usually entails locking it first. Hit the lock button. Then hold down. I'm just gonna walk around and see what it looks like you might have noticed that the interior now looks a little brighter with more artificial looking lighting that is the screen came on this vehicle looks very Sentra like Nissan Sentra like <laughs> from the from the front I had not really noticed that and that's why I said you know most times you don't get a view like this most people don't walk around their vehicles at night and maybe maybe it doesn't really matter because most times you're gonna be inside don't worry we'll, we'll focus on the inside but this is what it looks like with the screen on 
kind of bright, as I said, artificial type lighting. This is what it looks like in the rear. I like the rear view. I think it looks pretty cool. As much as, you know, I think modern cars kind of lean towards LED this, this, LED that. I think it's got it in just the right proportions, you know. Yes, you do have the tail lights, LED this and that, but I like things like license plate lights. They don't need to be glaringly bright, you know. Personal opinion. But looking all right so far. So let's go ahead and get inside. I don't know if you notice this. Okay. So one thing though, I love the front, well, I, I tolerate the front view. I love the rear view of the Murano. One thing I notice is that the side is so bare. You know, I've probably pointed that out. And apart from the puddle lamp that comes on, it's, you don't have much else showing you that, hey, this is where the Murano starts, this is where it ends. And I've not really pointed this out, I've not pointed this out, but other vehicles, Nissan's, uh, you know, for example, so first, Nissan did a really cool thing with the Murano that at some point that came to this really wide opening doors. Great. But then, and maybe this one is so bright, so vivid, and you know, you got all the lighting and reflections inside. But then my concern is that they used to offer a light over here. Just a lamp to let you know it's a clear, some sort of a clearance light. Just like this one right here, right? To let you know this is where the vehicle ends. Some other vehicles, I think Germans, for example, usually have a strip, a reflector right here. With the Murano, if it's dark enough and you park like on a busy street, and maybe you've got darker interior, someone could hit your doors. Because there's nothing really telling you this is where the door starts, this is where it ends, you know? Just a personal concern, just something I just thought I'd mention. Anyway, let's get in. pretty straightforward in what it wants you to do put the foot on brake push watch it come alive so right now I believe the only light that's on is it's probably an off I turned everything off let me turn it to auto lights will come on because you know it does see that it's dark outside look at the screen if I turn the lights off see it gets brighter and look at the inside pretty cool right everything else kind of dims along with it it's pretty nice and I know you can play with the light settings in there but I think for what we're trying to do this is really good enough so this is what I was trying to show you earlier is that with the car running now more lights come on at least I noticed that the this panel right here you know your windows and your door locks at this point now they come alive over here it seems like most of it was on I can't remember if that was on never really seen the car with it not running not too bad right not bad at all this is usually um, SOS. Don't want to hit that. I'll try to show you the buttons I was talking about. So this is the global all lights on, all hands on deck light. And this is what I was trying to show. This is what it looks like from inside here. All right? Where's the camera? I was trying to find the camera. Oh, there you go. That's what I was looking for. I kept pushing the wrong button. <laughs> Alright, so. And what do we have? So right now, let's go ahead and play with the lights a little bit. Turn signals. With the car running, this one is easier to find the hazard light. Right, and as I said, hopefully the other cameras are picking that up. One thing I usually like to try to do sometimes, whenever I can, is this. 
put this in put the e-brake on make sure the brake is engaged did you notice this it's like, I guess like other cars whereby whenever you disengage your e-brake your DRLs come on you're driving daytime running lights let me put the e-brake down again Ah, it already turned on can't let me turn it off just watch what happens so turn it on everything should be off with the e-brake down my driving my DRLs don't come on and as I said I hope the other one is catching it that's like the only time if you ever saw your car running and your lights are not on in front your brake is probably down so what I usually like to try to do though is put put it in reverse the reason is I like to see how bright or how effective the reverse lights are and I put the e-brake on because usually I jump out of the car myself and just walk around try to see what it looks like if for whatever reason you found yourself speeding backwards no other lights on can people see you I'd say yes people can definitely see you and this is what I was talking about the only time you can get the front to be like completely dead is when your e-brake is down because once you turn it on you know what I'm gonna go turn that light off because now I think it's getting to be a little too bright yeah you know what we'll still work with it I'm almost done watch what happens when I disengage the foot brake well first I need to get it out of reverse watch watch the front disengage the foot brake <laughs> did you see that so yeah pretty pretty cool pretty interesting I'd say uh, fog lights off on off All right there you go I was waiting for the second light because if you leave it in a weird position like clearance light fog light is not gonna come on if you force it all the way on you can make your fog lights come on generally fog lights only work with the low beam and you can kind of see the yellow amber over there so pretty cool I leave it on auto just tends to work itself a little better so that's pretty much it one thing I guess some, some people might be curious about is what if I opened the shade hopefully it doesn't open the glass yep just a shade what's the view like from outside okay so this is it running so I can kind of see a lot When it's really dark, by the way, you can kind of see inside a little bit. Right now, it's not, you can't really tell much, obviously, but yeah. Usually, with that roof open, you can kind of see inside a little bit. Let me get to the other side because there's one thing I wanted to show you about the roof, or at least the panoramic sunroof, which is really cool, right? The panoramic roof is that the view from the back though if you sat inside here if you sat in the back hoping to get a pretty good view well depending on your height and your angle and whatnot instead of seeing stars what you end up seeing is reflection of that <laughs> so it's an interesting thing but I, I as I said I like the I like the ambiance back here I think it's pretty cool it's it's dark enough back here but whenever you have, I think whenever you open the door, the, the lighting is just, it's quite a lot of lighting back here. The front does not seem to be as lit up as the back gets, you know, whenever you open the doors. Which is cool, I guess, you know, I, I suppose 
although these were in made like luxury or lifestyle vehicles you know you do consider that you have passengers who might be younger and maybe you need to provide enough lighting for them so it's just something I've noticed it just seems like the back has more lighting and here's a switch you can force that one on just like you can the front the front ones sometimes they usually some the higher end uh, Nissan vehicles would usually have another one here where you could force all of them on but suppose not not Murano high end but not quite huh one thing though like for people that I guess acknowledge or notice acknowledge embrace engineering and design one thing I've always noticed about most of these lights um, you know dome lights they're so easy to find you know even when it's dark you can usually just put your hand somewhere and you'll find it so that's one thing that's always been pretty cool like just the design and the thought thought process that goes into some simple systems and vehicles I, I kind of enjoy them so at this point I guess I feel like I've shown you about all I can show you with regards to the Murano the different things we can play with over time but I think right now this is it just makes sense to show you this much let me just turn this off yeah I think we're good really let me take you back to seat position one as I messed with it perfect turn things off it's an auto as I said there you go one thing though one thing that's interesting about the Murano is that I'm not saying it's a cheaply made car but not too much of it like strikes me as premium especially from the outside but one thing they did that is pretty impressive their side mirror mounted turn signals they're really really bright they remind me of like Audi lights or something do you see that <laughs> so I think those look really cool but yeah I think um, I, I hope this makes sense it's been my race against daylight daybreak and I hope this video makes sense if you clicked onto it I mean I'm going to title the video very honestly it's going to be not much just looking at a Murano at night that's pretty much what it's gonna be but hopefully the light show does make sense I hope you guys get to even if you don't get excited as excited about it as I was I hope you get to understand what I was excited about <laughs>